Okay, this will be the last video um, tutorial for uh, Chapter 6 about confidence intervals, critical values, and sample sizes. And so we're going to finish with minimum sample sizes. We're going to start with minimal sample sizes for a proportion, and then we're going to do an example. That, that example will be from the homework. Then we're going to do an example from the notes uh, for a minimum sample size for a mean. So. Uh, here we go. We should know how to find the minimum sample size necessary to estimate a population proportion. We will use homework problem 19 to demonstrate working these problems with stat crunch. So when faced with the task of computing minimum sample sizes, there are two cases examined in this problem. In one, there is no information from a previous study available. In the second, we have a proportion from a previous study that we will use for our target proportion. So here's, you see the question, I've, I've scanned it in uh, from my assignment uh, and that I finished it and you see the, the one with no information is 1691 and the one with a prior study of 18% is 999. Part C asks us what having an estimate from a previous study does and of course we can see it, it uh, reduces the number for uh, what's needed for a minimum sample. Uh, remember, you want minimum sample sizes because we frequently see studies where we what they is described as the n is too small, the sample is too small, and you can't really uh, generalize any um, any information from that study. Now, what we find is the minimum sample size are usually smaller than we think, but there is a statistical process to determine this. Um, so here is the, the problem. A researcher wishes to estimate with 90% confidence the population proportion of adults who think Congress is doing a good or excellent job. Her estimate must be accurate within 2% of the true proportion. So in part A, we're asked to compute a sample size without any previous information. The 2% is the margin of error, which means E equals 0 0.02 when I change that to a decimal. Next, we will need the width of our interval. We'll recall that 2 times the margin of error, 2e, equals w. This would be 2 times 0 0.02 equals 0 0.04. So w, the width of our interval, is 0 0.04. To use stat crunch, we need a target proportion. In absence of any previous study, this is always estimated to be 0 0.5. We've now identified everything needed to communicate the a minimum sample size with StatCrunch. So I, I've got both parts shown here, and I, I'm going to go into StatCrunch and actually work through these problems. But this is with no previous study. This is part A. So you notice right here I have a target proportion of 0 0.5. Um, this is a 90% confidence interval and a width of 0 0.04. To do the one with the previous study, the confidence level stays the same, the width stays the same, but we change that target proportion. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, let's see, I need 0 0.9, 0 0.4. Okay, got everything I need. Let's go ahead and I'm going to open StatCrunch and I'm going to do stats proportion stats, one, uh, one sample, and I'm going to do the width sample size. So let me, let me show you that again, just in case. Stat, proportion stats, one sample, the width sample size. I'm down here. I think I did that too fast the first time. Okay, so I'm going to change my confidence level to 0.9. My target proportion is 0.5, and my width of my interval is 0 0.04. And when I click Compute, we get 1,691. So now to do Part B, the only thing I need to do, now notice it, it made an adjustment to this, and that's because when you're doing minimum sample sizes, it, it always rounds up. So that's taken care of for you. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the 0 0.04 back in here, but this time I'm going to change my target proportion to 0 0.18. And when I click Compute, you notice I get 999. A significantly smaller sample size needed when I have this previous, uh, previous study to go on. So that's how you do calculate proportion sample sizes. Be prepared for problems like that where you do width 
out a previous study, a minimum sample size, and a width uh, minimum sample size when you do have a previous study. So let's go back to our, oh, I didn't mean to close that. I'm going to end up having to open it again. All right, let's go now to see a minimum sample size for a mean with a known population standard deviation. Um, calculating minimum sample size is necessary to estimate a population mean using StatCrunch is similar to computing proportion minimum sample sizes. Again, we will need the formula 2E equals W to determine the width of the confidence interval. The example below is taken from the chapter six notes, and I've used Facebook because I'm sure we're all spending too much time on Facebook now. You want to estimate the mean amount of time internet users spend on Facebook. How many internet users must be surveyed in order to be 95% confident that your sample mean is within 15 minutes of the population mean? Based on the results from a prior Nielsen survey, assume that the standard deviation of the population of monthly time spent on Facebook is 210 minutes. So notice that it's given us a population standard deviation right here. So let's collect everything. We have a confidence level of 0 0.95. We have a population. Notice I'm using the notation for population standard deviation. Sigma equals 210. The margin of error equals 15, which is right here. And we need 2 times E because we need the width, just like we did with the proportion sample sizes. So 2 times 15 equals 30, so my W equals 30. So I'm going to use the Z confidence interval, uh, the Z stats, bec because we know what the population standard deviation is. So let me get StatCrunch back open. I wish I hadn't closed it while we were there, but uh, stats, StatCrunch, open. All right, so I'm going to go stat, Z stats, one sample. Again, I'm coming down here to the width sample size. Everybody see that? And here is, so I have a 95. I need a standard deviation of 210 and a width of 30. And when I compute that, I get 753. So if we go back, you'll notice that's the image that you have right here, so 753 would be my minimum sample sizes. So this concludes all the tutorial videos for Chapter 6. You should be able to work every homework problem and every problem on the test from these questions. Um, I do want you to have the homework completed by Monday. It shouldn't take you that long, especially with these videos. I think we've worked about five of the problems in the videos. Um, and have the test. It'd be great if you could take the test Monday, but at least by Tuesday. And in the meantime, I'll be working on the same, uh, another set of videos and write another test for Chapter 7. Um, don't forget, we've moved the Zoom hours to noon to 2 if you, if you need me for anything or contact me on Teams or via email. Uh, good luck, and I, I know everybody's going to do well uh, on this. Be well.